Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Samburasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Samburasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Samburasa Incense burning, all space is filled with the fragrance. All Buddhas smell it from afar. All species clouds gather everywhere. With utmost sincerity, all Buddhas appear. We pay homage and offer. Clouds of incense to the bodhisattvas and the mahasattvas. We pay homage, we offer clouds of incense to the bodhisattvas and the mahasattvas. We pay homage, we offer clouds of incense to the Bodhisattvas and the Mahasattvas. So I brought the book out with me because I'm going to share some things with you and just in case you thought I made them up, I just brought the book as a prop so you know that I didn't really make them up. They're really in here. And if you want to check it out, you can just Google. I love Google. Um, Google, ha I mean, there's some things maybe we shouldn't Google. But if you want to know where to find something, you just, what did Buddha say about that? And uh, a whole lot of things will come up. And many of them you'll find references to the Pali canons. And, and I don't have anything against contemporary teachers and, you know, um, but I just like really prefer to go to as close to the source as possible and, uh, and, and try that. If that doesn't work, you can try something else. But start, you know, start as close to the teachings of the Buddha as you can get. And I don't think that you can go wrong. You know, uh, there was a... Uh, uh, in the Bible, the Christian Bible, it said that the teachings are so simple that even a fool can find his way in. And I think the Buddha's teachings are that way too. Uh, so if I am resisting something, then uh, and the Dharma says it, I just consider myself a fool. My feelings are not hurt. I'm like, I just don't get it. I just don't understand. You know, and if one will take the teachings in this way, it helps to open your heart to be able to understand, to be able to see. So he says for us not to just straight off the bat reject something. Everybody uses that uh, column of sutta. You know, you know, that's our go-to place when we read something that we don't want to, uh, you know, follow or we don't want to adhere to or it goes against something that we uh, believe or understand or have experience, you know. And he does say that if you know something through your direct experience, you can say, this I know is true. He said, but, but never say, and this only is true. See, it's the only part that messes us up. And so once we close off and we think only this is true, anything that comes up to bump up against that threatens us. It threatens our identity. It threatens our intelligence. It threatens our experience. It threatens, you know, and so we, uh, we refute it. We block it. We turn from it. Instead of being able to receive it, it's a, hmm, might be true. Uh, you know, under what circumstance? Under what conditions? With which people? Uh, and so he says, say something is true if you know that to be true, but never say, and this only is true. So opening ourselves up to the Dharma is uh, the most important thing we can do. Considering the Dharma a good friend that we can yield to, that we can tell our, share our deepest uh, secrets with, where we're strong and where we're weak, 
um, where we're befuddled and where we're clear. And as you pose that question with an eye towards a revelation from the Dharma, that's how one receives one. You know, it's, it's rare that we receive anything good that we're not looking for. We receive a lot of things that we didn't want. Well, I didn't see that coming, you know, but there's something about getting ready, getting prepared, removing the obstacles so that one uh, can uh, actually see what else is there. You know, so we look and we see something and depending on the condition, the state of our mind or our mental um, uh, attitude or our emotional attitude, we see something. But the Buddha asks us to say, what else is here that I don't see? I mean, if you only know what you already know, I mean, like, what good is that? You know, and so it's what we don't know that is an obstacle for us, or it's what we don't know that is a boon for us. So whether the situation is good or it's not good, we should always be saying, what else is here that I don't see? And in this way, you open yourself up more fully to the present moment. There's an expansion of one's capacity to know. So the Buddha was talking to his disciples one day, and he said, um, uh, well, why do you think we go forth into the homeless life? Well, they, we was talking to monastics. They had already gone forth into the homeless life, you know, and they didn't know. I mean, so like the first question I'm going to ask you today is what are you looking for and why are you here? That's, you know, we have to ask ourselves that question. What am I looking for? Why am I here? And when we ask ourselves that question, I mean, really wanting to know, we can start to cut through some layers of fog and we can start to, uh, there's something that comes up because the inquiry has been made. Uh, somebody wrote me a letter. Oh, I get lots of letters. Oh, I don't know. I don't get that many anymore because I think they passed the word around. You know, no point in sending her certain kinds of letters. And so they sent me a letter and they were upset because we're having a volunteer day next week. And they said, well, we, we really wanted to come, but since you're making people wear masks, masks, uh, we're not coming. <laughs> I'm happy to see people come and I'm happy to see them go. Um, you know, so it's, it's okay. It's, a, it's really, really okay. I mean, if you don't want to be there and you're there, you're just going to spew unhappiness on everybody else. So better to not come. Then you won't pick up any negative karma and uh, you won't be raining on everybody else's parade. No harm, no foul. You know, so she wrote this letter and then she went on from there. You know, that's fine. And forcing people to wear masks. I'm not forcing people to wear masks. I'm inviting people to come with their masks. Um, you know, and if they don't want to come, that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. And so, uh, because I don't want anybody to force me not to wear one. You know, whether it's not even a matter of who's right and who's wrong, you know. And so some of it is just respecting a person's, um, well, I won't say right because we're talking about giving up rights, right? Okay, and just being with what is. But respecting others enough, as, as much as you respect yourself, you know. So I have my ways, I have my views that seem right to me, you know, and uh, just giving me the, uh, the benefit of the doubt that that view is formed from something that makes sense, you know, you could say, oh, why do you think that way? Why do you feel that way? You know, and you can hear what I have to say, and, and it might be, all oh, poor child, you know, she, she really got traumatized, you know, over, over that event, and she's not thinking straight, and then you have pity on me. You have mercy on me as you try to enlighten me, perhaps, instead of just assuming something about me. But that's what we do. 
Heck, if you don't agree with me, something wrong with you. Now, that's, that's the first thing that comes up. And so changing that, that way of thinking, the Buddha asked his disciples, he said, for what reason do we go forth into the homeless life? And then he answered, because they didn't know the answer. He said, to be a refuge for all beings. That's the reason that we go forth. That's, that's, that's the reason uh, that we have this great aspirations. And sometimes we know it. Sometimes we don't know it. Sometimes we think that it was because I want to get in line. I, I honestly didn't see anywhere where the Buddha said he wanted to get enlightened. He got enlightened. But he was looking for a way out of suffering. So right away, you know, the people that you're going to meet, people who are suffering, the words that you have for them, that can encourage them, that could lift them, that could hold them, that could keep them, that could cause them to turn from a certain way that's destructive for them. That's going to be people who are suffering. And you know, people who are suffering, they're going to make you suffer. Unless you understand what you're looking for and why you're here. But the Buddha says, when you really get clear, you understand. It's to be a refuge for all beings. How big is your heart? Who can you hold besides yourself? Can you even hold yourself? That's the question. I ask myself. When do I ask myself that question? When I encounter someone and I have a story about them, even before I know them, or I know one little snapshot encounter with them, and I'm like, oh, I know what he's like. I know what she's like. <laughs> Whenever I have that kind of thought, where well, I have not looked to see what is not there. And that's how we work on ourselves. Before you know it, you're no longer standing in judgment. But the thing about not standing in judgment, it, it means that you can actually see something clearly. <laughs> so you know when danger is near. Because you're not pushing something away, and you're not, you know, grasping for something. You're, like, just there. And when you're just there, no agenda, you know, then you can really see what's there. And you can walk in the world fearless, regardless, you know, of who's in agreement with you and who's not. And when people do come and they walk with you, what a boon it is for you. And when they're not, you can... As he said, walk along like a tusker in the woods. There's a kind of power that comes when one is truly ready to know themselves. What causes me suffering? And we're not going to get into non-self today. That's someplace else. Another conversation, another day. Today, we're talking about what causes me suffering, what keeps uh, me full of, of stress, what is it that has me filled with anxiety, what is it that has me angry, what is it? You know? And if we look right there and put that up against the reason he said we embark upon this path, and he called it also the way leading upward. I didn't take that from the Bible. I took that from the Medina Nikaya. The way leading upward. And he talked about these different uh, realms of being, of existence. And he said, some people say, well, I don't believe in that. He said, but that that they don't believe in, that has not been known by me. Because there is actually that. And so... Uh, we don't talk about it too much because most people are coming out of some, you know, by the time we are out of whatever, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, we're looking for something other than what the world offers 
that can inspire us, that will help us to uh, come into the fullness of our own great wish. It's been a long time. I've had this mask for some months now. And so uh, somebody said, oh, sister, your mask is falling off. <laughs> so that I'm going to scare y'all if you just see me keep pulling it up. If that's because it's, uh, the elastic's getting a little warm. And so, so in this way, when we're not afraid to ask ourselves this question, we uh, catapult ourselves right to the forefront of the wisdom line, the wisdom lineage. And we can uh, come to know things without even trying. It just becomes clear to us. I call it getting a signal from, I call it getting a signal from the heavenly realm. Bonte won't call it that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I call it, getting a signal. You know, that way leading upward, there is a path, is what I'm saying. And sometimes we just like, you know, use the way leading up, but it's not like up or down or, or round and round, but it gives us a, 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 a reference for like understanding uh, something higher than what we normally uh, think or know or experience. I mean, I'm telling you, if it was only ordinary stuff, like common sense, then I got enough of the common. I'm looking for something that is uh, better than, greater than, more compassionate than, wiser than our common, ordinary sense. In fact, I'm looking for something that's not even so much based on the senses. Because if I rely on what I see, hear, taste, touch, smell, or think, I could be fooled. Because I haven't seen everything there is to see, or heard everything there is to hear, or tasted or touched everything that there is, or thought every thought there is to see. So, what a beautiful fox. Is that a fox? Yes. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, coming in here to Dharma, that's all right, little one. You can just sit down right there by that tree, though, and uh, and listen to the wonderful Dharma. Mm. Yeah. And so, so we can think that there is nothing higher than what our culture says, than what our society says, than what our group says, than what our family says, you know? And if we hold fast to these things, we'll miss what there really is to see, what there really is to know. And so the Buddha asks us, and he, he doesn't demand, he just asks, if you will just hold what you know, just hold, it can just let it sit right there. It's not going anywhere. You can pick it up anytime you want. But if you will suspend that being the only way to understand a situation, the only way to know a person, he says, there is another way. And you can get a bigger picture, a fuller, a greater understanding. And as you do, you yourself become vast and infinite. Your vision, uh, there's a, a kind of mirror, it's called a bevel mirror. And um, I had uh, I, this house, it was this, whoever had the house, uh, uh, built the house, there were two brothers and they were extremely, extremely handsome Italian guys, right? And they loved themselves and the house was a house of mirrors so don't ask me why i bought it but the house was a house of mirrors right and i mean everywhere mirrors everywhere um glass walls mirror walls and i noticed one day when i was standing there and i think i just bought that house just for that one dharma lesson and i was looking 
at the bevel glass. And if you catch the angle of the bevel glass, it duplicates and you see into infinity. And I had an insight about things just from catching my reflection on the corner of a mirror and it just replicated until it was so small I couldn't I couldn't see it. And so it changed everything for me in how I understand reality. I wasn't very much of a scientific kind of person. But now you talk about science and like I so totally I I totally get it and I was the rule person. You know but now it's just languaging, trying to take words and, and express something that's not expressible through uh, linguistics. The linguistics are too rudimentary for these complex things. And so it shifted how I understood and interacted with everything in my life. That one experience, we don't know what experience we're gonna have that cracks open, you know, uh, our mentality in such a way that we can begin to uh, gather in and sift through information that's not based on what we already think, already know, have already seen, tasted, touched, heard, or smelled. He said that the information that comes in that way, it can be useful in a way for out here, but it's not that reliable because we only caught a snippet of something. We only caught a little bit. Is, it, is my uh, is she out here? I'm not. I'm not talking about. It. I just like it so cute. My Cambodian, a little bit, little bit, to the whole thing, little bit, little bit. Yeah. So it it just we just catch a little bit of something, but we think we know that thing all together you know we saw something and we think we know how that person is caught me on a bad day and heard something and now they think they know me you don't know me you know and, and so our whole life can be misperceptions and he says but if you want to know what's really true, yeah. then you cannot rely beyond the capacity of our sense gates meeting external um, objects to come up with a conclusion. He said, but there is a way that one knows. And he said that the pathway to that is the stairway of virtue. Now, I know nobody want to hear nothing about virtue. We don't want to talk about all that, you know, like keep your own your opinions to yourself. Yet. When we start talking about virtue, talk about anything else. We can talk about politics. We can talk about religion. We can talk, we can talk about making money. We can talk, we can talk about anything. We start talking about virtue. Oh, like, like I, don't, I don't share that. You know, like, like every person just, you know, do what they do. We don't want to have that conversation. But you can't have that conversation if you want the extraordinary wisdom that leads to uh, a vast penetrating uh, compassion and the power that goes with that that makes one able to be a refuge for all beings. So we want to help today because things are in a mess. But just wanting to help, it's not enough. We have to be qualified to help. And sometimes to be qualified, we think we need to go and learn how to do this thing or learn that program or learn, learn that method. Or, but he starts us with virtue. And he says to understand, to have right view is the most important thing. Everything else comes on the heels of that.
So if you open yourselves up today, this is the shortest Dharma talk I have ever given because I know it's chilly out there and some of you are sitting on the ground. And I so appreciate that you stayed today for the Dharma talk. Um, and probably out of deference and respect for the two Bontys over here, or Bonty and I, I mean, I used to call myself Bonty. Can't call him, you know, like it, it symbolizes like, uh, you know, sort of like father, teacher, you know, like dear. And then we're like, sister? <laughs> It just doesn't work for me. <laughs> so for a long time, I called, I, I was a Bonte, you know. I can go for I in there because there's like probably 30 of us now, right? <laughs> so so the, the numbers are growing and maybe we'll get some re respect with I. Yeah, but respect is important. It's important not for the person to have to respect me. It's important for the hearer, you see. That's why it's important. Because who you respect you will listen to. You will allow yourself to be guided. You will appreciate them. And in this way, yes, there's many merits. Not that we do things for merit, but, you know, it's good. That when we do do things good, that there is merit. I mean, it just goes with the territory. You know. But it allows us to be open and receptive. Because we don't know where our next breakthrough is coming from. We don't know who it's coming through. So this was a great day today. And I respect the brothers in the Dharma who came and made this possible for us. Now, I always had the notion that a monk was one inwardly because that's what I read in the Majima Nikaya and it resonated with me. It's not because I wear a robe that I'm a monk. It's not because I can quote sutras that I'm a monk. You know, but when one makes a great wish for themselves, an aspiration inside, and then begins to walk in the way that fulfills that a aspiration, to cultivate themselves in a certain way that they can become the living that, you know, then that's when one uh, is a monk. And I know that, like myself, they have endured hardships to live the truth as they understand it, as they know it, <laughs> to live the truth as it actually is, regardless of what our traditions say. You know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we have one tradition. That's the tradition of the awakened ones. And these other lineages, that's because somebody didn't get it, so they explained another way to understand it over here and a different way over there because these people had only seen this and that helped them to understand. Then you get here in, in America and all of them are here. You know, like, which one should I choose? Which one is right? But there's a place that one comes when your intention is sure that takes you beyond the mere words and you understand what things mean. You know, that you can have five words to speak to one thing. And somebody says this way, somebody says it's that way, and maybe you try both ways and hey, both of them work. You know, it's just depending on where I'm coming from as I approach that thing. And so don't get too caught up, you know, on words. Don't get too caught up on the traditions of the elders. We need to check out the condition, the, the tradition of the Buddhas. That's the ones. And then wherever the elders line up with that, I'm down with that. And then you have the strength and the tenacity to walk. And people who are asking the question, will find them. It's not by chance. But every condition is due to causes. There's a reason why you are sitting here today. And this can be the beginning, the continuation, 
was the culmination of your own great wish to be a refuge. So a signal drops down. That's how I teach. And I talk about what drops down. And when it lifts, the talk is over. And my talk is over for today. I thank you for coming. I thank you for sitting in the cold. And I wish you every success in your own journey. May you be well and happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you and no danger. May you always be able to meet the inevitable difficulty. Bye-bye. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.